The Central Limit Theorem. The Central Limit Theorem states that if we start off with a population which is not normally distributed, it's one of the key conditions for the Central Limit Theorem that we start with a population that is not normally distributed. It could follow any other distribution like binomial Poisson or some unknown underlying distribution, that's fine, but it must not be normally distributed. We take a large random sample from this population and the definition of a large sample is uh, at least 30. The sample mean will be normally distributed with the same mean as the population mean but with a modified variance. So you take the population variance, so that's sigma squared, and you divide it by n, where n is your sample size. So the CLT states that starting with some unknown population distribution, take a large random sample, it must be random, the sample mean will follow a normal distribution like this. Here is an example of some population. Clearly this population is not normally distributed. Let's take a single random sample of size 40. So the arrows represent the values that were chosen. The mean of these 40 values is right there, that little blue box right there. And we can repeat this process. So we go back to the population, take another random sample of size 40. And now we have a new mean for this sample and then repeat that again and again and again. And we can keep on repeating this. And you'll see that the sample mean every time is plotted and it's building up slowly into a normal distribution. We can speed up the process. And what we're seeing here is that we started with some population that has a certain mean and the population has a certain variance. We've taken sample sizes of size n and the central limit theorem, the CLT, states that the sample mean there is normally distributed, which it is, with the same mean as the underlying population but as you can see, the underlying population is more spread out. It has more um, uh, variation. But the sample means here, in dark blue, are less spread out. So the normal distribution here has a variance based on the population variance, but we need to divide it by n. If you take the variance for the underlying population and you divide it by n, you get a smaller variance. Clearly, the normal distribution here is less varied. It has less variation than the underlying population. Let's say that we've got some population and we've recorded all of the data in the population in a grouped frequency table. And then we represent the table the data in the table in a histogram as below. Clearly the shape of this histogram has got nothing to do with a normal distribution. It, it does not have that characteristic bell-shaped distribution. I'm going to take a random sample of size 50 from this population. and then I'll work out the sample mean. And then I'm going to plot the sample mean on the graph here. So for instance, if I took a random sample of size 50 and the sample mean was 2.5, then the mean would be right there. And then I'll go back to the population, take another random sample of size 50, work out the sample mean again, 
and then plot the new mean on the graph. So for instance, next time the new mean might be down here. And then we're going to repeat that process over and over again, each time plotting the new sample mean along here somewhere. And what you'll see is that these sample means will build up a normal distribution. So the sample means will be normally distributed. So here's the first sample. So the arrows represent the randomly chosen values in the population and that little box there represents the sample mean for this sample. And we can repeat this. So here's another random sample. So I've got two sample means plotted now. And let me repeat this again and again. Each time we have a different random sample and the mean for that sample is plotted. We can speed up the process. As you can see, the sample means follow a normal distribution. And a normal distribution has a mean and a variance. It turns out that the mean of this normal distribution is the same as the mean for the population. And the variance for this normal distribution is based on the variance of the population. But we need to modify that variance. And it turns out that the variance for the normal distribution will be the variance of the underlying population divided by the sample size that we're taking, n. So we're taking samples of size 50 here. So we would take the variance of the population and divide that by 50. So what you're seeing here is the central limit theorem in action. So we started off with some unknown population distribution. We took a random sample from that population and the condition for the sample means to be normally distributed is that we need large sample sizes. So the sample size must be at least 30. The larger the sample size, the better the sample mean will approximate to a normal distribution. So this was the first condition that we start off with some uh, population distribution that's unknown. So the underlying population there, in a way, is not normally distributed. We're starting off with uh, a population that is not normally distributed. Random samples are taken of at least size 30, the larger the better. And all the central limit theorem is stating is that the sample means, all of these, will follow a normal distribution.